Hello YouTube friends. Uh, yesterday I posted a video of me doing the fret work on this Harley Benton HB35 Plus. I said I would try and do a little review of it. Actually I said I would uh, do a few samples of it after I'd finished but I, I changed my mind and uh, posted in a little piece of corrective text that I would uh, do a brief review. Well, I don't want to make a meal of this. I'm going to just say a couple of things about it. First of all, this is a very cheap guitar, absolutely brand new now. It's £215, which is not an awful lot of money. Second hand, you're picking them up for more like £130 uh, or less if you're, you're fortunate, although right now they're out of supply on the Toman website because Harley Benton is is a brand owned by Toman uh, music retailers and uh, I think that's probably driving the, the prices up a little bit. Anyway, this one um, I've done the fret work on and although you, know, you can't see every detail up close, uh, it came with some tarnishing here. I don't know if you can see that. It's not any issue at all. I've tried to use Brasso to remove it, but it's obviously just uh, the coating of the, the metal. It's got little bits of wear, it's got some file marks here on the, the fretboard. They're really not noticeable until you look. When you do look, you realise that, that um, some gorillas uh, set about it in the factory, but it doesn't make any difference to the playability. Um, the colour is bizarre, it's a kind of a, an orange-hued uh, uh, back. It's got a metallic blue finish in the front with the gold hardware. I'm not usually a huge fan of gold hardware, but it kind of works with the blue. So it's, um, I, I'm going to just, and it's got, sorry, I should just say it's a nice little, probably, you know, mock, uh, mock abalone um, inlay there. I'm sure it's just a, a, a thin decal, but it's, uh, it's good enough looking, little block inlays on the neck. The whole thing is pretty enough. And if you can pick it up for that kind of uh, uh, money, even brand new, I think they're a good buy. I used to have one in the cherry finish and I loved it and I thought it was great um, but eventually I got be a couple of better guitars and I couldn't see the point in keeping a, a cheap guitar lying around. I listened back to a lot of the videos that I do quite recently and I realised that the combination of the Harley Benton and the, the little, um, what was it I was using? It was a Strymon Iridium uh, pedal amp. It was actually really nice. It gave me some of the nicest sounds I'd had. And uh, that just made me a little bit keen to get one. So I've had an alert on eBay for months looking for one. Nothing came up. And then suddenly uh, there seems to be a, a wee flurry of them appearing again. So here it is. And the thing to say about it is it uh, has these um, own brand Roswell humbuckers. I think these claim to be vintage style. I have no idea whether that's accurate. I've certainly read a few reviews that said that they reckon they're quite high output. I would agree. I think they, they've got a tendency to slightly overload. I, I, they're not like, you know, DiMarzio super humbuckers or anything like that uh, from back in the, in the 80s. But I think they're on the hot side. And uh, actually, that's why I wanted to have a wee shot of one of these again. Um, it, it's actually quite appealing. I like the way that they, they distort quite easily and they just give you a nice saturation and that kind of edge of breakup sound that's easy to get. Whether I could get it just as well with other instruments, I don't know, but this one's quite appealing because it seems easy. Uh, obviously, I need to do some more work on it to see if that's a fair comparison. But it also has coil tap, which I love. So as well as having the, the humbucker sounds, the, the two uh, volume controls, this uh, upper one here is for your neck humbucker. If you pull it, it clicks and it becomes a single coil that taps the coil. And you can do the same thing simultaneously with the bridge pickup. And you can blend them both, each of a tone control. Interestingly enough, for push-pull volume uh, switches, they are smooth and uh, a sort of a curved cone shape. So they're really quite difficult to grip. I can just as an experiment here, I'm trying to grip that and pull it up without putting a fingernail under it. I, I did it there, but that was hard work. Thankfully, if you're a guitarist, you generally got decent right hand nails, so there's no problem pulling up, but that is a factor. I'm just going to turn these all the way up and just give you a very quick, very short demo. Uh, so, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the... Uh, oh, one other thing to say, just in case anyone's curious, it's obviously a Gibson 335 style copy. Uh, it's very heavy. When you look in through the sound hole, it's a, a centre block, just as a Gibson 335 would be. So it's a heavy centre block down here with the uh, hollow wings, effectively. So, sound. 
I put it through my Boss Katana, get Boss Katana 50, Mark II, and uh, everything's pretty much on 12 o'clock. Um, got a bit of reverb on it just because I can't bear the world without reverb. And what I'm doing here is starting off with the neck pickup in humbucker mode. I'm just going to give you the sound. <laughs> And if I go to the bridge pickup, nice and twangy. almost too twangy uh, and of course the blended centre position Reasonably nicely blended, and then the front neck pickup. We're going to coil tap. And then I will select the bridge pickup and call tap that. I've never done this actually, it should be fairly harsh. <laughs> And then the blend of the two single coils. I haven't made any adjustments, but what I'm going to suggest though is that when I've been playing around with it, I'm just back into the uh, the neck humbucker. That one of the good things is that the tone control is quite effective. A lot of tone controls, as you know, will just die. You know, like you turn them a little bit, and then nothing, 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 and then whoosh, dead. This is actually quite controllable. A bit of edge in, take a little bit out quite easily, and that works really well for some gentle picking kind of things.
And just using that one pickup, which is probably the richest, the fullest, the most sort of traditional AS335 kind of sound. It's very easy to get a usable sound. So it's a really cheap guitar. I should say inexpensive. I think it's genuinely cheap and cheerful rather than cheap and nasty. You can make this work. I have this uh, on the Boss on its uh, half watt setting, I think, at the moment. Let me just check that. Yep, 0.5 watts, so there's not an awful lot of sound in here, you know, there's not, a, not an awful lot of air moving. But it's so usable, so usable. Put it back into the both pickups position. Benton ES335, cheap, cheerful, versatile as hell, and the one thing I haven't mentioned is unreasonably heavy. <laughs> it's often said about Harley Benton guitars, this is a heavy beast. But if you're, um, you know, if you're happy enough to put a strap on or, you know, sit, uh, you know, sit uh, with it, it's not going to cause you any great problem if you're just playing it occasionally rather than gigging full time. Um, not really a factor, but. Uh, I think it's quite a lot of value for money. I would give it a definite, yep, check it out if you can get one. Thanks everyone.